We started with a hybrid, high-producing commercial layer. One reason I wanted to get away from that, they were awfully skittish, and uh, we could have trouble with them piling up in corners and freaking out, what I call it, popcorn over the fence, popping up over the fence all the time because they'd freak out. So they produced like crazy, but they uh, were very self-destructive, and that's demoralizing for a farmer. <laughs> so um, I wanted to go to a purebred that was more laid back, and I also wanted to breed my own. When you buy layer chicks from hatcheries, commonly all the male chicks are just thrown in the trash. They're not utilized for anything, and I didn't really like being a part of that. And so by breeding our own, we process the cockerels as fryers, and we can raise our own pullets, and it brings it all back to the farm, which I really like. So that's why we've gone to the black Australorp. I don't necessarily know that that's the purebred I'm going to stay with forever, but it was a good one to start with. They're very good foragers. We have between 250 and 300 laying hens. We've been breeding our own for the last couple of years. Among the hens, I have four roosters. At the beginning of the season, usually in March, I will pull out a certain number of hens out of the laying flock. This year, it was uh, approximately 20 hens that were laying well and were in good condition and had nice body type. I selected them out of the laying flock and I put them in the breeder house with the roosters. It's just a 12 by 12 wooden house with an outside run. We used to use it as our chick brooder. I may end up building something else, but for now that worked for just 20 hens and four roosters. I let those hens lay and breed for a couple of days um, and get the roosters uh, accustomed to them and, and hopefully start getting the eggs fertile. And then I start selecting eggs for incubation. And I store them in flats, tipping them a little bit, usually two or three times a day, and storing them at about 50 degrees. So I don't want them refrigerated, but I don't want them really, really warm either. I just want them in stasis. And then after five to seven days, I uh, look through the eggs and I select out the ones that are in really good condition. They're the right size and shape and the shell quality is good. And then I set those eggs in my incubator. I have an incubator that has three shelves, 180 eggs. There's three incubating trays which move as the eggs are incubating. And then the bottom, there's a hatching tray, which is stationary. And that's where all the eggs go to do the final hatch. The first tray goes in one week. And then the next week, I'll fill the next tray. And then the next week, the next one. And so that after the initial three weeks of incubation, a group of chicks will be hatching every week because I don't have a big breeding flock. I can just add eggs as I go. They hatch, I get the hatch tray cleaned out, and by the time that hatch is done, the next tray is ready to be put down in the hatching tray. Um, and that works out really well. It keeps the eggs in, chicks out. During the incubation process, I candle a couple of times. And that's to determine which eggs are fertile and which are not. I do it typically within the first 10 days to remove any eggs that aren't fertile at all um, and nothing developed. And you can usually do that after about a week to 10 days. Um, and I want to get those eggs out of the incubator because uh, they could risk getting rotten and blowing up in the incubator. So it's important to get the non-fertile eggs out. I then do it again right before I move the eggs down into the hatcher to make sure there's a live chick in each egg. Also, once I move them down to the hatcher, I like as much space as possible for the chicks to hatch. So by pulling out the eggs that are dead or rotten, that gives everybody a little bit more room. I keep pretty exact records on the eggs going in and coming out. 
the number of clears, the number that hatch, and the number of dead chicks. And that's really important to give me an idea of what my fertility's like. Am I keeping enough roosters with my hens? Are my eggs high enough quality? Are they all hatching at the same time? So is the temperature right? Is the humidity right in the brooder? So without keeping really close records, I can't tell if I'm doing a good job or not. And it's also giving me an idea to plan next year. I hatched out this many and this worked out, but next year I need to add another batch or maybe start a week earlier. Once all the layer chicks are hatched out and they're dry and they're ready to go, which can be anywhere from, you know, a day to two days, they can wait. They have absorbed their yolk into their abdomen, so it's not like they need to go to the brooder and get food and water. They can, they can hang. Um, if they were coming to me in the mail, they would be in the mail at that time. Um, so it's nice. It's lower stress. They just hang out uh, in the laundry room until they're all done. And then I carry them out to the brooder. Our current brooder system is a hoop structure, which has a lot of natural light. Early in the season, uh, there's no shade cloth on it, and it lets in lots of light, and it warms up during the day. It's like a little greenhouse. And then as it gets hotter during the summer, I put a shade cloth over it so I can still use it as a brooder, but it doesn't get as hot during the day. And then within the brooder, on the floor, there are these Ohio brooders, which are four by four wooden structures, which have heat lamps underneath them. And they're kind of like giant hens. It traps all that heat underneath. And we found that we can use way fewer heat lamps. Um, you can even potentially use just a you know 60 watt bulb to keep heat in later in the season when it's warm like this. Um, so it's cut down on our electricity use quite a bit and uh, it's kept the chicks warmer than just hanging heat lamps. I've been very pleased with them. If two types of chickens are ready for the brooder at the same time, I don't mind brooding them together. That works with me because my meat birds are red and my layer birds are black. It could be more difficult if you had red layers and you raise them together, shuffling them out. The only thing I don't do is share brooders with, with waterfowl. The ducks are incredibly messy. They go through the water, they make everything wet, and chickens like it dry, so it's not a good idea to brood them together because of the mess that the ducks make, and that makes it harder for the chickens to have dry bedding. The chicks stay in there depending. Broiler chickens grow a lot faster, so I ended up moving them out of the brooder long before I moved the uh, layers out of the brooder. Later in the season, broiler chicks don't stay in the brooder probably more than two weeks because the weather is good and they can go out to the pasture facilities earlier. If it's early in the season, the layer chicks are probably gonna stay in the brooder until they're fully feathered because it's cooler. So I just try to gauge it depending on the weather and how far along the chicks are. 